Hi, today I am going to speak briefly about how you can very inexpensively shoot video, especially as a realtor, uh, how to sound good, how to look good, how to prepare, a few of the bullet points that you're going to need. Now, I like to use a cell phone. That's it. I prefer my Apple phone because I have an Apple computer and I can use uh, AirDrop to share my um, video, the final cut, back to my to my computer to get into the software to do my editing if there's any editing. However, there is a lot of editing that you can do right on the phone. A little trick here to do, when you get familiar with something, it's easier to stick with the group, but cell phone, that's your primary camera. Tripod or selfie stick, depending on the video you're shooting. You can go to showcase, you can get yourself a tripod, um, I think they're $12 or $19. You can get three of them for $40, which is good for many things. It comes with a Bluetooth dongle, which is, again, great for selfies and whatnot, or if you're across the room. Very, very handy, inexpensive stuff. I use a Ceramonic wired microphone, as you can see here. It comes with a 20-foot cable, a 6-foot short, and, a, and an extension. Um, if you're running with an Apple, you're going to need the little dongle, the little white cable that plugs into the phone as an adapter. $52 is all the cable costs, $10 for the adapter. The selfie stick's about 20 bucks top, so you can very inexpensively get yourself set up to shoot video. You may even want to use an iPad to do your videos. Now, on here you'll notice that I have, well, you might not be able to see it in the camera well, but I have my bullet points. More on that now in a, in a moment here, but first I want to cover the background. Now when you're shooting your videos, as opposed to just being on a flat, barren wall, find yourself a decent backdrop, something comfortable, somewhere where you can get into your own environment. I was always shy when I started shooting video, so I like to be able to be in my own room, my own space, and nobody around to distract me or hear me and make me feel awkward. So now I'm beyond that, however, there's a very inexpensive backdrop I bought at an antique store for $75. It's a trifold, folds up, I can put it away when I don't need it. I get myself in front of a nice little area of my home, uh, set up on my table, get on my desk in front of me, and bang, I'm ready to shoot. Now, memorize your script, okay? Number one thing, know what you want to say before you're going to say it, or create your bullet points. You can put together a nice short 45 to 60 second video that introduces you. Now, I catch myself doing this one mistake, and I'm sure I've done it already. This is where the camera is on the far left-hand side of an iPhone. If you look at that, it's going to give the appearance when you're speaking to your audience as being a much more personal message if you're looking them in the eye when you're speaking. However, if I'm looking here now in the middle of the screen, I'm looking away from that person. Or if I'm looking at the wrong side of the phone, I'm much more distant from that individual. Now, sometimes you may want to shoot a video, for example, an About Us video, where you're introducing yourself, and that's about a, oh, let's say a five-minute video. You can then do what they do on W5 or 2020, and there's a person interviewing you. They don't even have to be there. You can have your five questions sitting up on an easel on the other side of you and answer those questions as if you're being interviewed. And then that way it gives the appearance of an interview about who you are. It's almost like a third party. It's a pseudonym kind of a way of getting into that third party approach uh, of giving that individual on the other side of the phone the ability to know you. So now going back to my bullet points over here, and that's why I wanted to show you with the iPad because it's set up in front of me. Um, I once had to speak for 30 minutes and my phone shut off and I was using my phone as my bullet point checklist. Well, I made a joke about it, that's all, about modern technology not always working correctly. Now, looking at the phone interview style, or if you're driving, that's another cool one to do. You get your phone set up on a mount and I had purchased the other day a phone to put on my dash that looks at me when I'm driving. That way I can speak and you can get yourself wired up again. The sound is great. Note that the sound quality. I use this Ceramonic wired microphone, $52, um, comes in two extensions, so if you're in your car, you don't have to have that extra 20 feet, you can plug it in, and the sound is good. Now remember that when your sound sounds horrible, people will drop the video, they'll stop watching, much more than if the video is grainy or not as you know pleasant. 
sounds harder to put up with. It's like a crying baby. I mean, if it's someone else's baby, as you know, it can be annoying. Um, if it's your baby, well, then it may be a different experience. However, you want the experience, the user experience, the end experience for that individual you're targeting to be as pleasant as possible. So if you sound good, look good, make your background interesting, know your bullet points, know what you're going to say, your message will come across that much better. Now, when I'm going down, let's see, um, interview style, about us page, dress for sequence. Now, if you're going to be going into a sequence of emails, you have five or six emails, you may wanna have the same outfit on or the same suit every time you speak to an individual. Or, you know, if you're coming across, each message is different, maybe you want that look also. I once took a program about, oh, seven or eight years ago, it was a 30-day program. Every day we got on for an hour, that person wore the same shirt every day. I'm sure he had many shirts. However, he gave the look of that same look every day because that's what he wanted in his sequence. So just keep that in mind. Now, adding videos to YouTube. Very simple. You have your account. You're going to upload your videos to your account. But the one thing you might want is to have that video go public. So you're going to have options. You can schedule for a future date. You can make it private. But private means that the person on the receiving end must also have a YouTube account. So if you're going to want to share more easily to people who maybe do not have a YouTube account, you use the unlisted account. That keeps it secret, private, only to the people who have that link. That's what you're going to want to do in most cases for emails where you're prospecting. Then they're going to add video to your email, that very same video you uploaded. Now you're going to upload that video. Oh, let me backtrack this. I just had a thought that it didn't bullet point here. And it's creating thumbnails. Thumbnails are what you see right now. I could do something with writing text on this side of the phone where there are the screen, whatever, where there's going to be some text that says what it is that the video is going to be about. That's called a thumbnail. You can take a screenshot or a, 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 a snag it, use an editor. I use snag it because of the, the tool uh, being universal, I believe you can use snag it on a PC also. Now you, you take that thumbnail, you upload it to YouTube, and that's the one that'll always appear to people as opposed to them randomly checking uh, or, or pulling off one of the three. They give you three to choose from, but it does not mean that you're going to get something that you're going to be satisfied with. So adding the video to Leadbooker, now all you're going to do is copy, you're going to go to the share link, take that share link, Go into Leadbooker, open up the email that you would like to address with the video, find the place on the, place, on the page of that email, put your cursor there. At the top of the page, there's going to be a YouTube button. You click the YouTube button and it'll give you a selection of six frames that you can frame your video in and you simply copy the link there. You, it'll, it, you save it and it'll paste and save the thumbnail that we just spoke of in your email. So when they get the email, they're going to see that it's a video, and you, then when they click on it, it will open in another screen. This is very, very important, I think, today for people. The people who get their voice and get their physical image via video in front of people most often are going to win the day. If you're prospecting the old fashioned way, getting on the phone, getting on the phone, well, nowadays people screen like crazy. They have iPhones, they have house phones. They, you know, you, they're all, you, you, very few have house phones, by the way, but they, you know, with their iPhones, they can easily screen you. So with this method here, you can even take a video and text it to them. So we use the iVoiceCast technology and the video technology for text messaging people. We don't want to over text either. You notice like if you get if you get spam text, you'll block the person. But if you specifically text a person a select amount of time and make it conversational, you will win the day. My name is James Osmar, and please, if you like this video, down below, click that you like it, click the follow or click whatever it is that you can do down below, or leave a comment even if it is of importance or significant to this video. This enables me to understand that I'm on the right track for you.